Fallout from uh, Fallout from AEW last night. Anything new? Probably a lot. Um, yeah. So, so from what I understand, after the show, um, the key people were on such a high that they could not sleep. But in fact, they did wake up at some point today, and uh, the young bucks were pretty sore. I know that. Um, and. Uh, not a lot more as far as uh you know AEW news i'm trying to find out where this uh next pay-per-view is going to be at i've heard some rumors but nothing confirmed um you know as far as the city and everything they had to move it back it was originally st louis uh but that date would have been a disaster well i don't want to say a disaster because they have their they it actually may they may be hot enough that it would have done okay but if I was producing a pay-per-view, I would not want to go against a Canelo Alvarez fight in the UFC in Madison Square Garden on the same night. Quite frankly, if I was UFC in boxing, I really wouldn't want to put those shows on at the same on the same night. But there we are. It's so uh, AEW is moving back a week, and um, the one ramification of that is that John Moxley was booked in San Jose on the 13th for New Japan, and he was actually the biggest star booked on the show. And I would presume he would be pulled. I don't know that as a fact um, because he can't be in two places at one time. And AEW his stuff is going to take precedence. Um, so we'll have to see how everything works out. But I would presume that, that, that AEW will announce the city that they got. I know that they have a city and I know that they have a building. Um, but I don't know what it is. Um, so anyway, I heard some rumors of a Midwestern city. So there you go. What do we got in terms of injuries? I have nothing really major. I mean, just guys banged up and things like that. Uh, but um, no, I haven't heard any major injuries coming out of the show. You hear anything? I have heard nothing about any serious injuries. But like you said, I mean, the Young Bucks were all banged up from the match. And yeah, uh, I'm um, sure that Penton and Phoenix were probably banged up too. Yeah, Matt took that uh, Canadian Destroyer off the top rope spot. Was yep. was pretty tough. And I guess Nick um, on that on that pile driver uh, kind of may have jammed his neck a little bit or something. In yeah, the, both the, pile drivers. Yeah. What about the music situation? Okay, so um, the Ruby Soho music was actually. Um, I mean, and, and she talked about it last night, but um, Lars Fredrickson of the band Rancid, who's a big wrestling fan. In fact, I've met him at the Cow Palace and I may have met him some other times, too. But, um, but I definitely met him at the Cow Palace once. But um, he went to her and made the suggestion of changing her name to Ruby Soho and using that as her song. And so she was thrilled to death. So there's no problem with those rights. And actually... It's funny because when I first uh, heard that she was coming in a couple weeks ago and I kind of figured, given the name Ruby Soho, that she's probably going to be using that as her entrance music. So I, I remember that song from many, many years ago. So I played that song and I thought that she's going to be a big star just because of that song. And I think she is. Um, and now I cannot get that song out of my head. So I, somebody needs to put somebody needs to write a really good new song. So I have a new song in my head because I think that like one of the things in my head is there's always a song in my head, but um, when a new when a new song gets in my head, the old song disappears. So right now I'm waiting for maybe I should go to a concert because I went to the Paul McCartney concert years ago and I had Junior's Farm in my head for like weeks. So. Maybe I need to go so to a concert. So you need to schedule yourself to go to a concert to get this particular song out of your head? I I probably could get it out of my head by, like... Um, Pl maybe just go play another song. Yeah, over and over again. But I don't have time to be playing songs over and over again this You have time week. to go to a concert? Not this week, I don't. <laughs> well, then you got to play a song, buddy. Yeah. I have tickets to the Beach Boys on September 15th. The Beach Boys? Can you imagine? I actually really can't imagine. Yeah, I haven't seen them since Cody was like a, like a, I'm going to say four years old. We went to see the oh, Beach Boys. They're going to say negative fifteen. No, no, he was four years old because he grew up. He grew up listening to nothing but Beach Boys, which was not my doing. So when they came to the Mountain Winery, 
which is in uh, Saratoga, California, or Mountain View, California, sorry. Um, we went to see them, and he was all excited, and he was four years old, and he fell asleep of like two songs into the whole concert. And I had to hold him. So anyway, that's that's a story. Since Anyway, um, so maybe that's maybe that would be my cure for having Ruby Soho play in my brain over and over and over again. Thank God it wasn't the final countdown. So the final countdown will not, well, as you could see, um, they played a, a version of Last of the Valkyries, a new remix of that. The uh, There was, in fact, an attempt to have him come out to the final countdown, figuring the place would explode, which they did anyway. But it was, <coughs> even for Tony Khan, it was cost prohibitive. So that's why that one didn't play. So um, Daniel Bryan, one of his friends, made this new remix. And they think that in time, this song will be just fine. And really... Honestly, it really doesn't matter that much because he's going to be a big star no matter what his song is. He could come out to no music and it would be just fine. He could just be a wrestler. What do we know about the pay-per-view numbers other than they are sky high? Yeah, I just know they're high. I don't know how high right now because it's unfortunate because of Labor Day. But... Um, I was told easily the biggest, but we already knew that. Like, I knew, we knew that before the show, that it was going to be easily the biggest. So what easily the biggest means, I don't know, other than that means well over 145,000, one would think, because that was the previous biggest. And I was told it will be the biggest since 1999, but I already knew that too, you know, other than WWE. <laughs> biggest non-WWE since 1999. But I knew that one too going in. So, so man, I'm getting sick. The... um Great. Yeah, I know. So so um, the uh, Google searches, which are usually a pretty good indication, were 500,000. It was the second most searched topic on the Internet yesterday behind Labor Day. So Labor Day, in fact, was a bigger topic than All Out. But um, other than uh, CM Punk's first night did do 500,000. Aside from that, there's never been an AEW topic show or anything to do over 200,000. So this is two and a half times what they've done for any other pay-per-view show. That doesn't mean that this thing's doing, uh, that'd be like 400,000, 300,000 buys, right? So I don't think it's going to be that high, but uh, but it's, uh, you know, as far as public interest, general public interest, um, this was gigantic. So we got that going forward. And, and the reaction's been... Uh, through the roof. Uh, many people think it was the greatest pay-per-view of all time or one of the greatest pay-per-views of all time. I have to watch it, like, again. You know, like, the actual pay-per-view version. I don't know. Maybe I'll try tomorrow. Um, I mean, it was a great live show, without a doubt. It was a... It wasn't, like... I mean, the cage match, you know, might, might win match of the year and is certainly going to finish uh, very high in the match of the year voting. Um, but aside from that, like, it wasn't like... Like, there's, like, you know, New Japan G1 shows where you have two or three, like, just incredible matches. And this show wasn't that, but this show, for atmosphere and for a show and for, you know, the four surprises and the, you know, things like that, you could, you could argue that it's, um, one of the best pay per views. I mean, it's certainly one of the better ones, one of the best. Um, you know, and, and perhaps my gut tells me, and, uh, you know, time will tell. But my gut tells me it's going to end up being pretty historic. They made the call, you know, to have, I mean, all those surprises in one show. I mean, I guess, I, I mean, I think it was the right way to do it. You could argue, like, staggering them. But it all just kind of came off, you know, like um, Suzuki's in town. And, and they were going to build that thing for the, for the Wednesday night show. So they had to do it there. There's no way around that one. Um Ruby, you know, they'd planned that for the final thing in the Casino Battle Royal. So that was the night to do it. There's no arguing there. Danielson should have come out at the end of the Omega match. I mean, and then so the, only, the other thing was Adam Cole, which was not planned until very recently because, um, you know, he just signed um, in the, you know, in the last couple of days. So um, they could have held him off. But you know what? I mean, the way the whole thing went down, it was the perfect night to bring him in and the perfect way to bring him in. You know, I mean, just bef before the show, I was kind of like thinking like how you would do it. And it was kind of like he, they did it 
kind of exactly like I expected, you know, where Adam Cole would come out. The one thing I thought was that Adam Cole might, like, like Christian would thwart all this interference, and then Adam Cole would come out, and you would think he was a baby face, and then he would screw Christian, leading to Kenny Omega win as opposed to Kenny Omega winning clean. So I did think that you could have done it that way. Not that it's better or worse. I actually think it's probably better to do it the way they did it. But um, but that was another way you could have done it. And then um, and then Danielson come out after obviously after the match is over when Omega says that he's got no more contenders and whatever. So and then he shows up. So don't know when uh, you know. Um, I don't know when the timetable is for Omega Danielson, but, you know, kind of have to do it at some point. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com, 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.